Hey good people, welcome to Devs and Dice. My name is Leif and this is the show I call Boxes of Shame, where I each week paint a miniature, most of the time for Dungeons and Dragons. And this week's miniature is the most boring miniature I've ever painted. Period. Now, jokes aside, the choice of miniature was actually inspired by some events that took place uh, both in real life but also in uh, in the Facebook group, one of my favorite Facebook group called D&D with Minis. By the way, I really recommend that you check this Facebook group out. Uh, links down in the description. A good friend of mine uh, shared his progress uh, on a miniature he was painting. The Werebear from WizKids. Here you can see an unpainted version of it and yeah, it's a bear holding an axe. Not terribly exciting in any way. But the thing is, something in my head just, you know, clicked. I have for some time wanted to try out NMM or non-metallic metal. My problem has been that I usually paint monsters of different sorts since I'm a dungeon master. And usually the weapons are quite small, don't have that much, you know, edge on them when it comes to WizKids models. And I really needed to start with something simple, like a sword or an axe. All right, time to throw my self-doubt and fear to the side. Let's go paint some non-metallic metal. A couple of years ago I started getting into D&D. As my passion for D&D grew, so did my collection of minis. And like many others out there, I now have boxes of shame. Legions of unpainted minis. Now this is my underdog story. This is me painting every single one of my miniatures. Alright, so this is the werebear from WizKids Nolser's Marvelous Miniatures. The model came in a pack together with the werebore. So I wasn't particularly interested in the werebore for now. So let's focus on the werebear. And yeah, it looks like it's a standing bear holding a giant axe. But yeah, let's try this out. First off, I'm not a fan of these super thin bases from WizKids, and I happen to have some 1 inch Reaper bases, so I went with them instead. As usual, I use super glue for the base. Now, once that had dried, it was time to remove some of the mold lines. Now I had some seams over the arms that I wasn't happy about. I had some liquid green stuff from Citadel uh, that I wanted to try out. I used some water to thin out the mixture and then just add it to the seams and mold it using a sculpting tool. Once the liquid green stuff had dried, I wanted to shift focus to the base. Specifically to blend out the edges of the base. I'm just using some super glue to expedite the process a little bit faster. And I use my normal grout mixture for basing. The mix has at least four different sizes of small stones and pebbles and whatnot to make it look more varied. I primed the miniature in complete black because I wanted to build up the colors from the base. I added some Umbral Umber, Bloodstone and Jackbone to my wet palette. All of these were from P3 Privateer Press. The first base coat was done with Umbral Umber. Once dry, I started highlighting with the Bloodstone. You can see that I'm trying to, instead of just doing a dry brush, actually painting in the highlights. One thing of note is that I'm following the texture of a fur. So following the flow of a fur as close as possible while avoiding the deepest recesses. Now I did about two or three layers of this because, like we know, acrylic paints are semi-transparent and doing multiple coats created a little bit more of a depth into the actual fur of the werebear. Thank you. 
So this is what we have so far. Now for that snout, I just used some jackbone to start layering in a base coat. And this is what it looks like. I also added some off-white to the wet palette and I just blended the two colors to create some highlights on the snout. I also mixed some of the other colors on my wet palette to create a nice color for some highlights on the brow and on the cheeks of the wear bear. Alright, it's time to handle that axe. I started by adding some dark sea blue from Vallejo, Thamar black from P3 and some off-white from Vallejo. First thing I want to start with is the flat side of the axe. Now my thinking is that in order to make the axe edge seem more sharp, I wanted to make the flat side look much more rusty and grimy. So for this I am using bloodstone and umbral umber again from P3. I am stippling some rust on in a somewhat organic way just to try to sort of simulate rust in nature. Now for the edge, I started base coating it with dark sea blue. Then I penciled in the edges using a color I forgot to show you called Underbelly Blue from P3 Privateer Press. So I'm doing an edge highlighting a little bit beforehand. This will help me to see the shape of the axe. Now of course, try here to be as neat as possible. Alright, so I start by sketching in my highlights. The way I chose to do it was to alternate my highlights. So if one side had three highlights, then the opposing side would have two highlights. I tried to make a quick sketch of it in Photoshop and it would look something like this. I'm not sure if it's correct or not, but it felt good to me. Then it's all about adding some of those mid-tones by mixing colors and glazing in those colors carefully. So at this point, it was a lot of going back and forth with the NMM. I think I restarted the process about two or three times before I was somewhat happy with the end result. The important thing to remember is that you should start out with sort of sketching out your highlights until you have a result that, you know, you feel happy about. Besides that, I added uh, some details here and there just to sort of spice up the model a little bit more. But anyways, let's have a look at the final result. Okay, good folks, I hope you liked the result. Please feel free to post in the comments or questions you might have in the comment section below. Me, myself, I am actually quite happy with the result, mostly because I've gotten rid of some of that fear and I've taken my first step into the non-metallic metal world. Anyways, I want to thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, please like, share and subscribe as usual. It really helps the channel out. And with that, I want to wish you an awesome day. Until next time, to the loop.